tired I've been so sick okay sorry it's been so long I've had the flu I've had three snowstorms I've been traveling I went to Cleveland this week to learn how to weld I'll talk more about that later in the vlog but when I returned home I found that my trailer had been stolen from beside my shop now a lot of people say people know you're out of town maybe people know I'm out of town but what people don't know is that I rent the shop to somebody else who's always there so my shop doesn't sit empty all the time and the night my trailer got stolen, it happened sometime between 11.30, which was the last time somebody was in my shop, even though I was out of town. There was somebody at my shop till 11.30 that night. So between 11.30 at night and sometime around 10 in the morning, the trailer got taken because my neighbor noticed it was gone. He thought I took it. He didn't realize I was away. The trailer's still missing. If anybody has any information leading to where it could be or who took it, let me know. There's a reward. I did have it insured, so in all likelihood, I'll get a brand new one. But it is just annoying to know that somebody came up to my personal space, cut the lock, it was chained up, and drove away with my trailer. It cost $7,000. It's just you knowing that somebody was watching my shop and waiting for an opportunity to take it. In lighter news, I'm working on this metal project. This is a sponsored video by burns o -Matic, and they asked me if I could use a torch, what could I do? And it occurred to me I could use a torch to bend and braze. Bend and braze. So this whole video is themed about bending and brazing. This video hopefully will be done next week. I'll publish it sometime later in this week or early next week. And this is a fun one. I came up with a lot of interesting designs using this quarter inch steel rod and brazing rod supplied by burns o -Matic. And earlier today, I published a video where I made these letters. These letters are for a building that was formerly a printing press. So these letters are reminiscent of movable type. And it was the concept of the architects who did the renovation at this place. A lot of people said, why didn't you have them in reverse? Because if they read in reverse, how would you make them in reverse? Would it be all the numbers in reverse or each number flipped in the position it would read right? So it was a very confusing solution to have it read in reverse as if it was real movable type the way you hold it and look at it and it reads in reverse so we opted to just make it read right and have the design reminiscent of movable type i cut it in uh, 60 something aluminum 60 65 aluminum 60 61 aluminum uh, it was the only profile that came that big from metals online and that's how i bought it this is 150 dollars worth of aluminum and uh, i made a considerable profit on this job it will be installed by the architects that purchased these letters from me. Still working on the finish with them. I'm not sure what the finish is going to be. If it looks drastically different, I'll post a picture on Instagram of what it looks like after the final finish. This week we went to Cleveland. We went to visit Lincoln Electric to learn how to weld. Me and Brett and Laura drove there. Laura flew in from Germany, came to my house, and together her and Brett and I, we drove to Cleveland. And it was a wonderful trip. We had a great time with some really wonderful people. My name's April and I make wood, metal, lots of stuff out of lots of things. Shops, I build buildings. <laughs> uh, my name is Laura and I make all sorts of stuff. Some bicycles, some furniture, sometimes a tiny house, sometimes stuff for my dog. 
Hey guys, I'm Douglas and my channel is Retro Weld and I like to weld. Brian Fuller, custom car, custom bike builder. I've built small motorcycles and big houses. My name is uh, Zach, my channel is ZH Fabrications. I do uh, metal fabrication, uh, art stuff, woodworking, blacksmithing, a little bit of everything. My name is Mark Prosser, I'm a welding educator. What's my, uh, what's my channel, Brian? <laughs> Mark Prosser Weld. <laughs> yeah, Mark Prosser Welds. Weld, fabricate, paint. I'm John Malecki, I punch faces. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'm Jim Bollinger from the Do Right Fabrication YouTube channel. I like to build stuff cool, and I don't like to get punched in the face by this guy. That's why I'm sitting close to him. Hey, what's up? I'm Brad from Fix This, Build That, and I make stuff. Um, Izzy Swan, and I punch people who punch faces <laughs> and make people happy. <laughs> I'm Brett. I'm Jimmy's daughter. I make his life a living hell. Thank you! We got to do a tour of Lincoln's new welding school. They built this huge building dedicated to teaching welding. There's hundreds of welding stations where people could practice and learn. There's instructors, there's classrooms, and it is a beautiful place. It is a beautiful place. Anybody can sign up to learn how to weld, and I highly recommend it. It is a thorough education, and you have lo loads and loads of hands-on experience. So many cool people here at the Lincoln event. Look who I found in the crowd. What's going on, y'all? Tell everybody who y'all, what you make. Johnny Brook, Crafted Workshop. Mostly make furniture, that kind of thing. Mid-century modern. You know, pretty much weekly videos on the YouTubes. Have you welded before? I have welded before, but I'm, I'd still consider myself a novice welder. For sure. Did we learn something this week? Oh, yeah, a lot. We did, didn't we? A lot, yeah. Learned a lot about TIG welding. I learned that I want a plasma, CNC plasma. That's what I learned. <laughs> While we were in town, the guys at Lincoln set us up to meet some Cleveland makers, and we met some incredible people that are making in Cleveland. There's a whole emerging warehouse district with incredible shops and people that make cool things. It's a huge collective. We got to hang out with the guys at Skidmore Garage. We got to hang out with the guys at Rust Belt Renovations, or Rust Belt Restorations. Three barn doors, great, great crew of guys. Soul Craft Workshop. Check all the links below to follow these guys. They make incredible work and they're an incredibly creative crew of guys. The big part of this week was learning how to TIG. MIG is a little bit easy to learn, so we just spent a little bit of time on it, but what we really wanted to learn was the chemistry and the science behind TIG welding. And that's what the instructors were teaching us. We had a couple of really great instructors. Tell everybody who you are and what you do. My name's Mark Prosser. I'm a welding instructor at a college in Wisconsin. I fabricate, I custom paint, I uh, weld. And, and you I, write books? I write books, I do consulting work, I do seminars with my partner Fuller, hang out with Jimmy here, learning all kinds of crap, hopefully teaching him some stuff. Yeah, I learned a lot from you this week, Good. so thank you very Good. much. Yeah, you're very it's welcome. Been great. Hope to uh, get out to your shop maybe. And, uh, now, now I know how to TIG weld correctly, I think. He's pretty damn good. <laughs> Thank you, bro. So I found this is Big Jim Bollinger. Jim. Hey, what's up, guys? Tell everybody what you're doing here at Lincoln. Uh, so we're up here teaching these guys a little uh, tick theory. Uh, tick welding, making them look uh, awesome, they weld awesome. Did I pass? You passed the first day. <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> it's been a great week. I want to send a big thank you out to Lincoln and Craig over at Lincoln for putting this event together. We had a wonderful time and, and it was great that he brought all of us together and it is just always so much fun when we all hang out.
When we drove back to New York, Laura came and stayed at the house for a couple days. Laura did the podcast, so if you go listen to the latest episode of the podcast, you'll hear Laura. She made a really cool movie in my shop. It was great to watch her from behind the camera, set up shots, and then get to see the video. It was really nice to watch her work. She's very inspiring to me as a filmmaker and a maker. She's a great artist. If you don't know her, you gotta go follow her immediately. And we had a chance to talk just before she got on the train. And here is my conversation with Laura. It's a little long, but it's because it's interesting. I hope you like it. <laughs> I'm just gonna hit the button right there yeah. and turn it off. So hello, Laura. Hello, Jimmy. Did you have fun in New York this week? I loved it. Yeah, you make me feel so welcome here. It was it was great. It was like Thank staying you. with family. Well, I consider you family. I consider all of you two family, don't we? Yeah, yeah. I mean, we just had a great time in Cleveland. Mm -hmm. It was so nice. I think the tick welding thing will really change a lot for me. That will change yeah. a lot of the projects that I'm now able to do and how much fun I have with welding because MIG welding always stresses me out. Yeah. Like it's it's stressful. I love it, but it's uh, it's a stressy kind of work. It's hot and it's sparky and yeah. And TIG, welding TIG welding is more like drawing. Mm, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you definitely got to like focus and and you can hear yourself while you do it. Yeah, <laughs> breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was it was a wonderful experience. Just to, and it's always nice when we all get together. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, I wish we could do that more often. When you were a young girl, what what did you think you wanted to be when you grew up? I didn't really have a clue. I was changing my plans all the time. I wanted to um, work with animals. Then I wanted to um, be like a um, sea biologist, like oh, an yeah. ocean biologist. I yeah. don't know what the word for that is. Yeah. Um, then I wanted to be an artist. I remember telling my parents I want to be an artist and I remember that they laughed. So I was oh, really? like, I will never say that again in my life. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was really horrible. <laughs> <laughs> See, you got to encourage. You got to encourage that artistic drive no, when it starts. Exactly. It's honestly, it's the, it's these little things. I will never forget that feeling. I, yeah. I, I, I'm sure they, they never meant to do that. But no, it right. was, I was really small, and I think I said it in a, in a weird way. Like I want to be a free artist, or right. um, I don't know. I had a weird, weird word for it. Probably that's why they laughed. But I was like, oh my god, no. If that, that's what it feels like, I will never say that again. Oh, that's so horrible. <laughs> I graduated the gymnasium in school in, in Germany. And I only did that because that would allow me to stay in school three years longer. And I did that because I didn't know what to do with myself. I didn't really know what, right. what my... I had a band and I was really into the band. <clears throat> and I always liked drawing and sketching. But there was nothing that really drove me. And and how old were you when you kind of realized that your direction was going to be making things? That was 26, 27. Right, so you were considerably yeah. into your yeah. adulthood. Exactly, yeah, and I had no tools, nothing at all. There was uh, one class, wow. yeah, one class in university where they made us um, work with everyday objects and figure something out with everyday objects. And I built a little tattoo machine. Oh, wow. And that's when it, like a prison tattoo gun. Yeah. And that's when it like, oh, that makes me so happy. And I really felt how easy it is for me to express myself. In making stuff. Yeah, because I, I always had the urge to express myself. And then like when you're younger, you want to write poems because you're, you know, you're in the puberty and your life is so hard. So you need to yeah. write a poem about it. And it always sucked. Like the, those poems were horrible. And I wanted to write songs. It was horrible. And then I drew a lot, but my brother was so much better at drawing that this wasn't my outlet either. Right. So, and when I built this tattoo machine, it was the first time that I honestly had the feeling like, I'm not exactly sure what I'm saying, right. but I have a feeling that this is a voice for me. That's great. Yeah. I've had that feeling. I think everybody has that feeling when you make that one thing. You always want to recreate that moment in time, like when you wake up, mm -hmm. like when you're in love with somebody, you wake up and you go, oh near me yeah you know or you want to go see them you want yeah or you want to wake up and you want to go see that thing you made the night before uh -huh. yeah, you wake yeah, yeah. up and you're like oh yeah i had a successful workshop last night yeah yeah exactly that's, you want to try and create that often as possible yeah that's the best or you 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 build something and then you leave the, the room just to come back in and see it with fresh <laughs> eyes like oh yes <laughs> yeah, exactly <laughs> i get that feeling first when i started to wood carve and I couldn't believe that I was wood carving. I haven't done much lately. When I would wood carve, I would come down to the shop and be like, wow, I can't believe I accomplished this. Yeah. I would just sit and stare at it and go, wow, I can't believe I did that. Is your uh, um, jaw chair one of your first carving projects? I, yeah, oh, yeah, that's funny. I made that years ago. I made that about 20 years ago. Uh, I guess 1994. Mm. Is that 20 years ago? 
I don't know. <laughs> I'm Come just as bad with. at math. As uh, you are. <laughs> so yeah, so I made that in 1994. Um, just I had a whim. I I, I had a, a dental uh, impression of my upper jaw, and it was sitting on my table, and I would keep changing it. And I said, "Oh, wow, wouldn't that be cool to sit in? It looks like a perfect little <laughs> yeah. like kind of club lounge chair." And so I just got inspired, and it was before YouTube. It was before anything. I took stills of the process on slides. How long did it take you? Because that's massive. I took uh, about uh, probably about two weeks. It's fast, you know, just working and and I didn't know much about joinery, so it's all kind of falling apart now. But not completely; it's just disjointed in a couple of spots. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, and it's twenty years old. You know? Yeah, yeah, and uh, I love it. Taylor hates it. <laughs> Taylor wants to put it in the attic. She's like, "Wouldn't that be nice?" Like, oh. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Be? She always tries to fool me. Wouldn't it be nice if we put it up in that bedroom that nobody goes in? <laughs> And I, I walked in the other day and she's like, yeah, it's really not that comfortable. I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> the chair is very comfortable. But that's the thing, like when you make something yourself, you automatically like it so much more than if you yeah. were sitting in a chair that you bought. Like even if it has flaws, even if the joinery comes apart a little bit, even yeah. if it wasn't that comfortable, I don't know, I haven't, I didn't sit in it. But Vera is laying in your chair all the time, so it must be comfortable. Vera loves it. Yeah. For my bike projects especially, people give me a lot of uh, criticism when I cut apart a bike to, uh, to insert a cup holder or to, you know, make yeah. a tall bike or whatever. Oh, you took this perfectly working bike and you, you ruined it. But that's what artists do. <laughs> that's what artists do. And also, I, I think I gave it value. It Absolutely. might not have the same value for you. Maybe you're into perfectly working bikes, but I'm not. I'm into modifying things and that's yeah. why I, I don't think it lost value. I think it gained value. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I, I, the people that don't understand, they just they don't have to understand. Mm -hmm. And I don't think, like, maybe if you're not a maker, it's easier to spot the obvious mistakes because you're so used to just um, seeing shelf products, you know, products that are made for the yeah. for the most buying range of customers. Is that like, how do you put that? For the, yeah, for the standard, most common standard phenomenon. issue. Yeah, standard off and, the rack uh, yeah right and then once something sticks out because it's a little bit different you spot it right away so like what's this why is there a, a cup holder you should you should buy that on amazon for three dollars <laughs> it's better but and it's hook not. it to the frame yeah and that's something like i don't even think that's a bad thing but that's something that i enjoy with making my videos whenever i get a negative comment like that i know it's negativity but i also know that they thought about it for a little bit right. like that it, it made them think even if they don't like it but it right. made them think and that's that's something that's inspiration maybe yeah. next time he will yeah, they have to live in their own hell so <laughs> that's true. they don't know they're in it <laughs> i like how you the, the, the music keeps the beat going and 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 just the small details of and you do really good selective focus thank you that's very inspiring to me i mean thank i said you. to brett one day i said My videos have to start to look more like Laura. <laughs> I can come over and help you. <laughs> and even the other day when you were bending on the bender, you had that, that beautiful long angle. And I bent on that bender a couple of times. I'm always going for like the... I'm going for the more like uh, news journalist shot. Mm -hmm. You know, that's kind of what I was... Because I, I yeah. took photojournalism courses and I'm always going for that like upper three-quarter shot. Yeah. That just explains everything in one yeah. second. But I, I'm definitely inspired to try and get more creative with my cinematography when I watch this stuff. That's so interesting how you can see people's background in their videos, right? Yeah. Now that you're saying that you're a photojournalist. Yeah. That makes so much sense for your videos. Yeah. yeah. Right after 9-11, I got really intrigued into to taking, uh, you know, doing photojournalism. And I took thousands of photographs on film. I used mm -hmm. to, when I would travel through Europe a few times, I have volumes of books for all the cities I visited. Wow. And I always would take detail pictures. Remember we were talking about how to kind of keep a, a vlog creative mm -hmm. and like I would say, okay, I'd be in Paris, I'd be like, I'm going to take pictures of, of like steel joinery. Yeah. So all around, like, you know, because I got inspired by the Eiffel Tower. So I took all <coughs> these different pictures of where like steel met, Yeah. you know, wow, in the Crystal that's... Palace and stuff. So, and then I remember being in London and then taking pictures of like hubcaps, uh, sewer caps on the ground. Yeah. It's just a different, yeah, so different theme, like details for different cities. That's so interesting. So, I mean, that's a lot of what my photojournalism stuff is. I photographed the white lines on the street for some reason every time I was in a different city. <laughs> And that was really directly related to the album cover of uh, Abbey Road, where the oh. Beatles are walking across the white lines. That is so interesting. So I would photograph the different types of white lines in different cities. And then another big theme that I would photograph a lot is things stuck in the street, like 
embedded in the in the concrete. I have thousands of pictures of things <laughs> stuck in the ground, like keys and combs and stuff. Wow. IDs stuck in the in the wow. in the hot tar. Maybe you should dig those out and make a make a magazine. That's a, one of these days. One of these days. <laughs> I I have a feeling that even though YouTube has been here a couple of years and you've been on YouTube for seven years now, is it six or seven years? Six yeah. or seven years, and it's been only two and a half for me. But I still feel that this is just the beginning, mm. and that it will evolve into something way way bigger. I think maybe the name will not be YouTube. Maybe this whole, I mean, maybe I shouldn't say YouTube, but like the content creation and the influencer thing and us makers being in that world. Mm. Um, I do think we have a special place in the influencer mm. game. Yeah. Um, just because the community is so awesome, just because yeah. there's only friendly competition, right. there's no hate, there's no negativity, yeah. at least not within our maker group. Right. Like, there might be some negative comments from the outside, but that, that doesn't yeah. even matter. Yeah, they don't understand the community. No, exactly. So I, I feel like there's something bigger mm -hmm. that, that's just about to happen, especially if you have this crazy, well-working network. Um, see, like how... Steven Spielberg and um, what what is he friends with? Like I'm I'm escaping the names, but like once you look into oh Hollywood systems, yeah, exactly. Like it's always groups of people, and then you find out that they've been friends for years. Right. Oh, and they build each other up. Exactly, and yeah. it's just like helping each other. Once you find your community of people that you want to work with, that right. you're comfortable working around, that you trust, it's lo it's it's never that much about. Um, how much they can, how much money they have, like what skill size, always more about the social aspects. Who right. do I want to work with? Who do in which guest room I feel most comfortable sleeping, you know? Right, right, right. Who do I like to have breakfast with? These things and I think we're building this right now and we have this great selection of skills. Yeah. So as a community we're pretty much unstoppable, right? Right. We gotta unionize. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, everybody's helping each other out. So if somebody somebody oh yeah, there was a, the the make affair in Rome a couple weeks back they asked me if I wanted to come and speak and I said oh yes I'm coming but I'm only coming if Jacko is coming too so that that's so fun you know <laughs> yeah, right, we're yeah. doing these things for each other yeah and that will make the community stronger and stronger so it doesn't really matter where this whole thing is headed it just matters that we stay friendly with each other and that we keep connecting keep networking right. and keep right. talking to each other yeah that's been great it's been great having, it's always great having you around it inspires me reminds me that I used to be young <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Right. That was a good conversation. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thank you everybody for sticking with me and if you're curious to see what Chippy's been barking at this entire time, my buddy came to visit with this cute new kitten. If someone is a rapist and you didn't report them. Like can we all acknowledge that Fuzzy admitted to knowing about these crimes? I didn't report you because I'm a